All Blacks in Ireland, folks. Test number one. 42 points to 19. All Blacks pretty comfortable winners from a sold-out Eden Park. We'll go through some key events, some stats, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on the game. Obviously, both sides have had a little bit of disruption in the build-up to this one, especially with some injuries and COVID cases, but um, two pretty strong teams uh, that took the park, and it was the Irish early on. Felt like this game was in Dublin rather than Auckland, even though, as I said, sold out Eden Park. The Irish absolutely came out of this game flying, and as a New Zealander, All Blacks fan, I was rather, I don't know, man, just unsettled by the way the All Blacks just seemed to be really passive the way this game started. The Irish were relentless. Not surprisingly, they get the first try, and it was like 17-plus phases in the, the build-up to it. I mean, the experienced Keith Earls is the guy who finishes it off. He manages to beat Jordy Barrett one-on-one, -on -one, but it's all the um, carries over the advantage line and the build-up Sheehan and a lot of other guys, um, plus Gibson Park with his service, just absolutely, um, you know, pushing forward. And then when the advantage comes, uh, you get it to sixth and they get it wide. So well-worked Irish try, really. They missed the conversion, but it's a five points to nil lead. And if you're going to get a win at Eden Park where nobody has got a win against the All Blacks since like the 90s, it's the kind of start you need to have. The misconversion is a little bit unfortunate because I do feel like to beat the All Blacks there, you need to be taking all the chances you can get. So it's a missed two points, but still, it's a really good start. It gets better. I don't know if it's better, but it, it continues on well. When Ring Rose is like putting a big hit on uh, Sam Kane, it's honestly all Ireland. Until maybe like a couple of events, the All Blacks win a scrum penalty, and it's a good encouraging one for the All Blacks front row because they were maybe not that fancied up against the Irish you know, props of like Furlong and Porter, but... I feel like the All Blacks front row did pretty well uh, in this game. And then when the Irish are still on the attack, Bowden Barrett is able to kind of pick the pocket of uh, Gibson Park, who's on the attack. I think it was him. Um, to kind of just shut the attack down. And from there, the momentum kind of seems to swing the other way. Uh, the All Blacks, when they finally had their chance to get some quick ball, because up until that point, it had looked a bit ugly. Uh, when they were finally getting that go football, Sever Reese getting over the advantage line. Sam Whitelock with the quick hands to Paya as well. Getting the ball wide to Fai Nganuku on debut. He's got the maturity to not just reach out and try to score when he knows he's going to be short. You know, he gets the ball, plays it back so they can go through another phase. Jordy Barrett goes over the line, showing the power of a guy who, you know, is like six foot five, should when he's, uh, you know, kind of backing himself. So really pleasing play from the All Blacks. Like we haven't seen that from them that much at the end of last year. So that was actually really nice. Uh, seven points to five. And then it gets better when the um, the ball goes loose. I mean, I think Sexton had taken a knock to the head, but he was still trying to get involved in the play, and maybe the passing wasn't quite there. There's some loose hands, but it was more than just him. Uh, the passing was just a wee bit loose. And uh, as I said, going to Eden Park, that's not what you want. Sever Reese pouncing on it, you're not going to catch him. It's going to take a pretty quick person to catch Sever Reese. I mean, they gave it a crack. Omani and Sheehan and whatnot were chasing him down to the end of the end goal, but uh, not to be caught. So that's one that I think the Irish, when they do their match review on Monday, will be um, will be pretty dissatisfied with. So it's 14-5 to the All Blacks. Sexton goes off to have an HIA. He doesn't pass. Um, there will be some people who said that this incident should have been looked at, but Sexton was virtually prone when he got hit. And I watch a fair bit of rugby. I'm certainly no ref, but I've seen a lot of incidents when guys are that low to the ground when they get whacked anywhere. It's uh, generally not considered foul play because right tackle, which is a totally different situation. I did actually think there'd been a knock on by Gibson Park way before in the build up to that, but um, haven't gone back to watch it twice. Uh, but if it had been a knock on, none of that would have happened, but sometimes that's just the way. Um, there's also a curious decision, speaking of Gibson Park, because a bit later on when the All Blacks have clearly swung the momentum back their way, uh, the Irish get a penalty and he taps it and takes it quickly. And he looks to maybe half have caught the All Blacks off guard, but I would have thought this is the time, you know, you're a little bit rattled, you've conceded two relatively quick tries, two tries in 10 minutes, so let's settle things down, go back to our fundamentals uh, back our game plan to get us through this kind of patch and to, to get back into the ascendancy. No, nah, taking the qu uh, quick tap, unstructured play against the All Blacks at Eden Park. I don't think that's the right move, but that's easy for me to say from my couch. But um, yeah, I did feel like that was a potential turning point. 
and then the All Blacks just continue with the silky skills, man. Um, Tupaya gets a try on 36 minutes. Bowden Barrett with a nice little grubber kick through. These guys don't even play for the same club team. So the fact that they had that kind of perfect timing was, uh, you know, was a testament to both their skill levels. They had to check it if he was offside because it was that close, but it was, it was bang on. And uh, yeah, suddenly the All Blacks are 21-5 up. And then Savia scores kind of a crazy one where Aaron Smith with advantage has a wee snipe there's nobody home he chips it over the top nobody can gather it and then Savia just kind of pounces on it um, good reflexes from him to be able to do that and good for Aaron Smith to kind of back himself because we haven't seen him running the ball really at all up until that point he's been certainly firing away the quick distribution which is getting the All Blacks the quick forward uh, go forward ball in the back of the effort of his forwards but um yeah he set that one up pretty nicely so they go into the sheds 28-5 down the Irish and the halftime, they probably needed it to come five minutes earlier, to be honest, because, uh, yeah, they conceded a couple of tries in the last five minutes of that half. It all started so well. Um, the Irish have got a bit more possession, but less territory in that first half. Clean breaks is 4-1 to to the All Blacks. Uh, the penalty count's actually remarkably low. It's only 2-3 to three. Uh, at half time second half again the Irish start really well so like whatever Andy Farrell said to the boys at half time seemed to have an effect they're able to go through those phases again and they get some reward for it man um, low with the offload to ring rose and uh, suddenly it's looking a bit healthier 28 12 that's still a heck of a comeback that needs to be mounted but that's the start that's one step in the right direction um, but then the All Blacks are I get the feeling they're clearly in a mood for, um, you know, for a, for a fairly decent one. They're backing themselves at this point. They're not looking to opt for threes. They get a penalty. They opt for touch. And interestingly, that all comes from uh, a missed Irish liner a wee bit earlier. So it's like they had the momentum. The Irish had a penalty. They kicked for touch. They missed the liner. I was like, again, at Eden Park, you need to be taking the majority of your chances. If you're missing line outs... Yeah, you're going to play into the All Blacks' hands. So, um, yeah, the All Blacks able to kind of capitalize. Not immediately, but a few minutes later, Artie Savi, a bit of individual brilliance, beats three defenders. I think Ring Rose is the, the main one, but there's a couple of other guys who attempt to tackle him. Can't bring him down. That's That one in the review on Monday is going to look pretty bad from an Irish point of view. You can't be letting... I mean, Adi Savi is a world-class player. There's still arguments here in New Zealand about what his best position is, but you can't be letting him score like that. He clearly enjoyed it. Um, yeah, 35 points for the All Blacks by that point. So it's starting to look like the scoreline could get pretty hairy if things keep going like that. Um, the Irish, interestingly, do have... I uh, look at their scoreline with 19 points. They certainly left a few out there, though, eh? Like, Carberry misses one where he loses the ball over the line. That's one of those ones where um, I thought he had enough fingertip contact with it to... Uh, to be awarded a try, but the ref says no Rico with the try saving tackle, which on first glance looked like he took Carberry's head off, but on the slowing down, it was just on the shoulder. So I think I agree with the officials that that one was fine. Um, as I said, it looked really bad uh, when you first looked at it. Um, and then the Irish did a wee tap and go, couple of phases. And I was thinking, because Peter Armani was pretty mad at the ref that they hadn't awarded the Carberry try. I was like, he's definitely going to carry. He's definitely going to pick and go. He picks it and gets an offload somehow that he shouldn't be able to get away from his body. He gets it to Van der Fleer, who's just able to kind of flop over the line. Like, it's all made by Peter Armani's miracle pass. But Van der Fleer didn't, didn't take it. He drops it. He drops it. Van der Fleer, I feel for him because he's had such a good year. But, man, they needed that one. They absolutely needed They didn't get the Carberry one. They'd made up for it by scoring this one. But that one's a no-go as well. It's not going to be your night, man, when that kind of stuff's happening. Um, so the All Blacks are able to exit. When they get on the other end of the field, they get a five-meter scrum. Peter Gus Sowakula's come on. He'll probably be a new face to a lot of Irish fans. Been very good for the back of the scrum, from the back of the scrum for the Chiefs this year. He showed that ability in this game where he just peels off the back. The scrum's going forward. And uh, he's able to, to go over to make it 42 points to 12. To be fair, in the build-up to that, Scotty Barrett had had a wee tackle, which I thought had no arms in it and maybe could have been looked at. But um, I don't know if Marius van der Vestes had a look at it. Like I said, me and Marius don't often agree on a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, um, they didn't look at it seemingly. So it must have been 
all good. And then uh, later on, Porter gets held up. Um, they get held up again at full time, but not before Aki at least manages to get one consolation try. They did manage to get that one consolation one, which makes the scoreboard look a little bit healthier. They were chasing that that uh, fourth try at the end of the game, but like I said, they managed to get held up a couple of times. Um, Tui Nkwafe got um, got yellow carded because the All Blacks were conceding a lot of penalties at the end. I'll give the All Blacks defence a lot of credit for holding the Irish out for quite some time. Like it was Porter that got held up, Conan that got held up, and somebody else got held up. Um, but yeah, they were, they were conceding a few penalties in the process, so it probably could have been a second yellow, but again, I don't think it's going to be a difference maker in this game. It was more just does it finish 42 19, does it finish 42 25, maybe even 42 30 if they get a couple of those tries, but yeah. Run meters finish 410 to 343. The Irish have more possession and territory, especially in their second half, but the All Blacks do more with what position they had. Clean breaks is 5 to 2. Remember, it was like 4 1 at half time, so they only conceded the 1 in the second half. Uh, defenders beaten 14 to 15, so pretty even. Turnovers conceded a little bit troubling for Ireland. 17 conceded to the All Blacks, 13, so coughing up a little bit too much pill. They missed three of their own lineouts out of 17. The All Blacks missed two out of nine of their own, so neither side will be totally chuffed with how that happened. And some of the ones they were getting, which won't come out in the stats, were actually a little bit messy. You know what I mean? It wasn't clean ball. Penalties conceded 15 to 10, with the All Blacks conceding 15. Uh, like I mentioned, they were conceding a flurry of them at the end, which is never a good look in terms of the discipline. But um, individuals, Adi Savia, man, 61 run meters, beats a... Uh, clean break, four defenders beaten, two tries, 17 out of 18 tackles. Pretty sweet performance. The guy is class. I mean, Doris, on the other hand, was pretty quiet, man. Three runs, six meters. Nothing much doing for him, unfortunately. Scotty Barrett, his controversial controversial selection by the uh, selectors at six. Uh, he shifted into the second row later on, but 20 out of 23 tackles. He carried, but I don't know if his carrying was that flash. Um, didn't exactly clock up the run meters like the likes of Asavia. Reese, four defenders beaten. He was pretty sharp, wasn't he? He got subbed. Um, Sheehan, 41 run meters for, for the Irish. Two defenders beaten, 9 of 10. Tackles, although he was busy with his carries. Josh Van der Fleer, 20 out of 20 tackles. We expect that. Would have liked him to score that try. But, um, yeah, ultimately, it's a pretty good win for the All Blacks. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing what happens in the remaining games of the Tour. Remember, there is still one more game against the Māori All Blacks. I hope the Irish are flying a few more bodies over, because like I mentioned, it seems like there have been a few guys taking knocks or HIAs, just um, yeah, a bit bruised and battered, so we'll see how things go. Um, but yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts on the match, and um, yes, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.